What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. VidCon, Aubergine Man, Leo Lionheart 5DK57, 42999. I'm not saying it. You can read it yourself. Shad Church, Alfonso Romero, Jacob Bird, Hawa Muaza, Yadi, Jimena, Ratchet Akarui, Kohav0310, Tokusa, D. Witt, Corey Costello, Sean McLaughlin, Jack, Lorenzo Baxter, Clinton Brown, O'Malley Caboose 5, Dinosaur, Allison Rathbone, Jason Cantu, Acolyte, Michael Pedigo, Marvinator HD, Godfather Plays, Moisa Smelina, Manut D02, Damn Is It, Tommy, and I would also like to thank our executive producers, Joshua Fix, The Gimster 101, and Bevan Brummett. Thank you all very much for your support. If you wish to become a YouTube member, feel free to click the Join button, which is right beside the Subscribe button right below the video. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. He didn't get a yellow out of that! <laughs> no! I, I, what, why would I lie about that? Why?! Oh, come on. Oh, it's even worse for Wasabi. No. Oh, my God. Will he hit 20? You know what? No. I'm not playing that one. Fuck you, Al Pudding. Rookie of the year, 2020. Let's go. No. No. You motherfuckers. I don't know if you did it on purpose, but... Probably not. Someone put it in the, the requests for us to watch Escape from the Commercials. And me, I was just like, wait, I thought we were... I guess not. I mean, sometimes I forget what we've watched and it's just like, uh Because in all honesty... Well, there are a ton of these. There's, so. uh, there's like ten or more of these. I think this is number eleven. And a lot of them start to blur together. Much like commercials, they start to blur together. So basically, we started watching Escape from the Commercials, and I was like, this seems incredibly familiar. I was like, having that thought, We're too. We're in a gay media group, Escape from the Commercials, and I'm like, hey, Nate, we already watched this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should have looked, honestly. But me, I was just like, eh, and then the request, they probably won't do it. How wrong I am, you, you evil bastards. Because <laughs> if we would have gotten halfway through that, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we were just like, We've watched this before. Wait a minute. Also, also, you've frustrated me so bad that I shaved the top of my head. Like, <laughs> you did that before. No, I know I did. <laughs> well, the rest of it's coming off like tomorrow, so that's gonna be fun. But yeah, yeah, go ahead. I look like Ben Franklin, Danny DeVito. I look like you know, uh, friggin' uh, what's his name from The Office? Kevin. I look like Kevin. Uh, I look like I'm about to spill his chili all over. Uh, the Dunder Mifflin, Mifflin office. So, yeah. Uh, Curse of the Commercials. The newest one by the Nostalgia Critic. This one, I have, uh, you know, I, I've heard a lot of people say, watch it now, watch it now, you must watch it now. And I'm just like, okay, okay. And I was, and then all of a sudden I, I saw, like, people were requesting escape from the commercial. I'm just like, did we, did we not watch that one already? Yeah. And, yeah but apparently so. And I feel like I've heard another name that people have been requesting. I don't know if it's one you'd already did or not, but I don't think it was. Maybe. I don't know. This whole thing, also, it's pretty smoky in here because Nick is vaping. I mean, I mean look at this. This ethereal smoke. It looks like we're uh, coming at you from uh, uh, from like the cellar from Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, and Curse of the Commercials, I've... I mean, I wonder how many more of these Doug is going to do. I wonder if he's going to even it out at like a solid dozen or if he's going to just just be just keep going until the end of time. We're going to see Doug Walker at age 80 just being like this commercial debuted back in the yo ripe young year of 2020. <laughs> and um, we're just going to be like oh god. We're still reacting to stuff even when we're in our 70s. I hope that's not the case, but it probably will be because, you know, we can't help but do commentary and have fun. Uh, <laughs> every time I look over and I see the sheen on like the top of my head right here, and I'm just yeah, like, "There's a oh. request for curse." Yeah, but 
anyway. From Corey in the Discord. Yeah, so this one was requested on our Discord, uh, and I guess we're just going to hop right into it. So, uh, you ready, Nick? Yep. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. This episode brought to you by... Ah, you know the drill! Yeah, but seriously, it's brought to you by DoorDash. The app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Okay, go ahead. A lot of people I know use DoorDash. After these messages. After these messages. After these messages. Oh. Donkey Kong is on cereal. Yes, Donkey Kong used to be Don't the king of the shot before Mario, meaning the plumber's iconic design looked more like Popeye if you threw him in the wash with the Pringles guy. Donkey Kong brand cereal has a sweet, crunchy corn taste. Oh, oh. Every box comes free with an abducted woman. We haven't cleared it with Wiggly yet, but we're sure it's fine. And boy, <laughs> is it fun to crunch. It's so authentic, Billy Mitchell smugly judges you while you eat it. Oh. <laughs> Go cheat on Donkey Kong more, you shithead. How do you always somehow make me hate Donkey Kong? My favorite thing about this commercial actually isn't the cereal mascot. I'm glad Steve... Kids eating this. I'm glad Steve Weeby finally got justice uh, against Billy Mitchell because Billy Mitchell's a complete and total shithead. Yeah. Check out the psycho eyes on this one. He's sitting there like, One day that chunk of ass will be mine. The lady ain't bad either. Oh, <laughs> One more. I love this weird point he does too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm dead inside. And how about this kid? I'm sure he loved that they picked this picture to freeze on. It's not an image of joy, that's a missing kid photo on a milk carton. <laughs> <laughs> still, it's a cute ad for the time. Showing once in a while fads are still fun to look back on. Damn. Barbie in space. Yeah, I know that color is Barbie's fetish. I think the only thing not pink was probably Oreo Barbie. Oh, you bet you recalled ass. That was a thing. That was. That was a thing. Just seems a little much. Do astronauts really need shoulder pads? Is that even what that's supposed to be? It looks like her bra is trying to escape through her sleeves. She's like a fabulous version of the nurse from Return to Oz. I love too that's not the American flag she's setting down. It's her own goddamn name. I declare this phone in the name of Barbie. Uh, I think you mean America. Barbie is America. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's why her suit's like that, so she can go space mutiny dancing at the moon disco. Girl power! Uh, don't take your helmet off, okay. <laughs> <laughs> as long as hair products, mini skirts, and a silhouette like the Terminator are involved. I know fashion is subjective, but you can send this ad and this product to the nearest pink sun. Right, Barbie? This humanity is just what we need. This humanity is just what we need. Did you see my butt? <laughs> Recently, when I became deathly ill... This ass a classic. You may not recognize it at first, but you will shortly. The problem Hell, is like, I've fallen and down and I can't get up. Something happens to you and notifies the proper people to come and help. It doesn't seem like anything too special until you hear this line. I'm fallen. And I can't get up. Yup, that's where that famous phrase came yep. from. For whatever reason at the time, everybody mocked <laughs> I'm Exactly yes! So I mean, it's like, a like, meme before <laughs> memes were a thing. Yes! <laughs> it was! Like, there's actually, okay, there's actually a, a current, like, exploration going on to, like, what is, um, what was, like, one of the first memes to, like, really reach widespread appeal? This is one of them. This is one that, like, got into movies, got into... TV shows, went across the pond, got into anime, got into everything, got into internet culture. It's, it's, it's strange how things can transcend. For instance, the term cool. When the term cool came out, it, it was like from like the 20s and 30s. 
It's like to di- to like describe cool jazz, you know, like make you feel like you like the jazz that you're listening to. It's like it's cool, and to think that cool has st- it like still to this day is used the way that it is, and you know it. But that's like vernacular. Because yeah, I still say like that's pretty cool. Yeah, Stuff exactly. Like and well, with this, cool. with this, you know, help! I've fallen down and I can't get up. You know, this transcends. You know, transcends like multiple versions of media and that's ultra impressive and I'd love to know like what probably one of the like first memes <sighs> to cross the globe would be I mean that's like I mean that I know people were talking about the possibility of there actually being like memes from like hundreds of years ago oh yeah such yeah Ye old meme yeah ye basically. old memes like, yeah some people were like there could have been like hieroglyphic memes to an extent. What if what if the Egyptians are memeing us all by by displaying cats as their gods, and <laughs> instead the pharaoh just had a fetish for cats? The cats were just like they are on the internet, pretty much, and everybody interpreted it as like, oh, the Egyptians uh, Egyptians obviously worshipped cats. They got them everywhere, like an alien that came to Earth, like you know, a thousand years from now, because think the same thing about us. Oh, clearly these people worshipped cats because they were all over the internet. Exactly. Yeah, like, like some of the first videos on the internet <laughs> ever posted were cat videos. Yeah. It's like, and and they're still going on. So maybe the Egyptians just really liked cats and thought they were funny. Like yes, <laughs> maybe so. Maybe the pharaoh saw a cat swatting at a fly and it fell down, and he was like. <laughs> Like, oh, clearly they saw cats uh, as sacred because they would murder people if they, like, you know, hurt a cat or anything. And it's like, dude, we would do the same thing nowadays, pretty much. We do, Like, actually. if someone, like, hurt my cat, I would beat them to death. Like, Oh, if someone hurt Lulu, I would snap every single one of their, like, digits individually and work my way up to, like, you know, fingers, hand, arm, you know, humor, you know, humorous, shoulder, neck. <laughs> Neck would be last. I, I after getting like up to here, I'd start at the toes. Yeah. First delivery line. There's just something about the awkward silence and kind of weird pause she made that just makes it so memorable. Help! I also love the idea of less patient people reacting to her. I've fallen and I can get up. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> <laughs> I've fallen and I can get up. Take a big step back and literally fuck your own face! <laughs> I guess the rest of the commercial is Thank a you, little odd, too, which maybe adds to the memorability of it. I was able to summon an ambulance, my next-door neighbor, my family, and my doctor. I was also able to summon my grandchildren, my pets, my psychic, the president, and even the Black Panther. Hello? I've fallen, and I can get up! <laughs> Rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Her kids react like Jack Black after he married a monster wife. Her neighbor's knocking like he wants to bum some Cialis. And her doctor looks like this is the tenth time she's called this week. No, Mrs. Wilson, I can't fix your garbage disposal. You know what they really need, though? A caring call. Anytime a stuck-up woman wants to pretend her life is in danger, there's an operator ready to handle it. Yes, yes, there is a black person selling lemonade outside! That's not a problem. It most certainly is! Arrested at once! Well, answer me this question. Is the person recording you? Yes, he is. Then he's on your own fish. Oh, thank God, the police are here! Wait, why are they coming up to my apartment? They might feel a little <laughs> off, but this just what makes us love it even more. I've fallen. And I can't get up! Anything else, I mean, would you like the hotel moved a bit to the left, though? <laughs> 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 Fucking faulty towers. Oh! Speaking of classic commercials, Muppet creator Jim Henson got his start doing ads back in the 50s. Yes, before they were selling high end products like. Crumpets. This is how the Muppets got their start. Merry Christmas and enjoy the Sir Wilkins Coffee to so many people at Christmas! Well, several products were advertised. His biggest hit was with Wilkins Coffee. Why? Because he only had eight seconds per ad. Which meant he not only had to get to the point quick, he had to get to the needless violence even quicker. Care for a cup of Wilkins coffee? No, I don't like coffee. This is been a fun <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's just, it's just, well, it's like, well, we've done the bottle, we've done the tree, we've done this. What do we do? Just shoot the bastard. No, I don't like coffee. Just shoot the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he 
And they think TV's violent nowadays. It's like, Jesus Christ, they were just straight up shooting puppets in the face back then. <laughs> we don't do that. Like, all of a sudden, it's just like the Wilkins Coffee ad exec is off to the side. <laughs> I just saw camera over here. He's like standing right here, and then this one guy, he's just like looking over at the ad exec. He's like, he's like, hey, would you like some Wilkins coffee? And the other one's like, no, I don't like coffee. Wilkins coffee? No, I don't like coffee. I sign your paycheck, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Say you like it. No. This is good. Game over. Public service. It always starts with a character named, get this, Wilkins, who loves Wilkins coffee and always tries to persuade his buddy, Wompkins, to try some. And when I say persuade, I mean horrifically mutilate. We're here to persuade people to drink more Wilkins coffee. What's the club for? Do you have any Wilkins coffee in your house? No. I see you don't drink Wilkins instant coffee. What about my future? You don't have a future. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> This is, this? this is so brutal. Wilkins Coffee uh, ads you are the shit. You don't have a future. You don't have a future. <laughs> <laughs> it's got Nick laughing so hard he's, he's had to resort to his inhaler. Yeah, for, <laughs> for Wilkins Coffee. I don't want to. <laughs> reservations about working on the Ninja Turtles movies because he thought they were too violent. What the fuck, man? What saw here was perfectly fine for some reason. You can't persuade me to drink Wilkins instant coffee. Oh, okay. Just a stab in the dark. I was... <laughs> Damn. You see, here's the thing. Jim Henson, when he was younger, you know, was not about to, you know, was... Yeah, he, he didn't really have any restrictions, but as he got older, he got into more like of the Zen Buddhism stuff. You know, that's, that's the one thing a lot of people don't know about Jim Henson. You know, he got into Zen Buddhism and, you know, got into, you know, the you know the teaching of, you know, not, not teaching violence to kids and all that. And which, here's the problem with that. I mean, I understand, like, teaching kids, you know, not be violent, but there's going to be moments where they have to stand up for themselves. I mean, because the world's full of, because, I'm not going to say the world's full of jerks, but there are jerks in the world. And there are people who are willing to follow those jerks because, you know, certain, you know, people, uh, people in some cases still act in the pack mentality. So you can't just let people run over you. It's not, it's not healthy. But anyway, uh, Jim Henson, you know, him being, uh, <laughs> him being, uh, the way he was back then versus, you know, how he was, uh, with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I mean, that's understandable. I mean, you know, he... Uh, and plus, you know, the fact that he died so young, too. That's the other thing. You know, he got bacterial pneumonia and, you know, he never recovered. But, eh. I honestly love how violent these are because they happen so quickly and with no remorse. In fact, Wilkins might be one of the most sadistic maniacs in television history. <laughs> and I'm including Homelander. I've got five aces. Wow. Can you beat that? I've got a can of Wilkins coffee. He didn't Jesus. need to shoot him there. Coffee was never brought into the conversation. <laughs> what the <laughs> Jesus is wrong with you? Want some Wilkins coffee with your strawberry shortcake? Can't say that I do. You can't say that you don't either. Yeah, hitting him with cake's not enough. You gotta pour scorching hot liquid on him too. <laughs> he's not even reacting. He's so numb to the constant pain he's in. This machine will make you want a cup of Wilkins coffee. Not me. Oh. <laughs> This one, they couldn't Damn. even show it was so horrific. On guard, salute Wilkins Coffee. But I don't drink Wilkins Coffee. Some learn, some don't. He goddamn <laughs> gutted him. He is wiping the blood and stuffing Damn. off his sword, and he has no penitence. If you don't start drinking Wilkins Coffee, I'll make you into tuba fours. It's a mix of the glee he has in creatively skewering his best friend and the absolute dead eyes he shoots every time he does it. Any last request? Like for a cup of Wilkins Coffee? No. How shocking. <laughs> Jeez. The eyes of a psychopath. With great timing, puppetry, and of course, a sadistic sense of humor, these coffee commercials were the best, even if you never drank Wilkins. You either go with Wilkins or you just They literally go. use like every way they could come up with to kill that guy. <laughs> yeah. Cause pain. Hello? Care for a cup of Wilkins coffee? Sure. Well, no, I didn't even know it was a coffee you could still get. Things just seem to happen to people who don't drink Wilkins. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Ooh.
Baby born magic party surprise. Something more contemporary, but no oh, less disturbing. Baby born surprise definitely leaves a surprise in the toilet. Sparkle piss. Actually, on an American diet, I'm surprised we don't piss sugar at this point. Get a surprise, feed a yummy snack. That's the face of a girl who's just given up. She's like, oh yeah, not only do I have to act like this is something I would play with, but I have to pretend it's normal looking into these eyes that look like they're sucking out my chances of going to heaven. Even a Margaret Keene painting of a Powerpuff oh, Girl would say, look at those wow. babies. Purple, I, I, I'm surprised he brought up Margaret Keene. You know, the bait, you know, the doll eyes, you know, that... Damn. The party to She Poofs Charms. Wow, they just said it. We've talked about toys before that show don't tell, but they straight up say they poop charms. No wonder their eyes are so big. If I found out I could ship babies first Tiffany's, my eyes would be bulging out too. Party surprise, peace glitter, and poops charms. That's a conversation starter. Where'd you get that bracelet? Up my dolls I asked. I'm going to this side of the room now. Baby Basically. Born magic body surprise. Poops magic. Yeah, nobody should poop magic Poop is you're magic. Or leprechaun or prince. This ass disgusting. I'm moving on. Peace glitter and poops charms with 30 surprises. Dolls each it's like they went to a kindergarten <laughs> and they were like, all right, we're going to do a cool experiment today, class. So we're going to have the boys make a toy for the girls and the girls make a toy for the boys. And the boys are just like, oh, they should have a doll that poops charms and glitter. Peace glitter. It's like that's that's like something a girl would like, right? <laughs> I don't know because <laughs> it literally sounds like like a five year old boy came up with it. It does kind of, it kind of does. It sounds like, like something my like, nephew, like, like how pee and, pee and poop is funny, like you know. <laughs> uh, it's like surely the girls in my class would think that was funny too. Prop, maybe I don't know. So how'd you do it? Heads up, this is probably one of the most awkward McDonald's commercials ever made. It's not the subject matter about a kid who broke his arm and is trying to have a McDLT, but how mystifyingly unnatural their conversation is. So how'd you do it? I slipped. He slipped. We know you were tricking off to Larry the Lobster again. <laughs> it's okay. No, it's not. McDLT everywhere. Ah! It's me as a kid! Killing oh. the puberty! <laughs> it was my ass. Mm -hmm. The sun was in my eyes. The sun. Why do you think words that are catchphrases are catchphrases? Are you, uh, using this fry? <laughs> Come on, guys. Give me a hand. We like to thank Tommy Wiseau for guest directing that line. <laughs> <laughs> Comedians. Where? It, my, my thoughts exactly. They're not funny. Like, you guys are just assholes. Everything about this is smothered in cringe, from their long moments of dead silence to the strange way they say pretty much everything. The sun was in my eyes. The sun. Okay, I was in a car accident and five people died. Died. Okay, they're not dead. They're actually laying in my trunk. Trunk. Okay, they're in my basement and I think they only have minutes to live. Minutes. Okay, maybe less. God, what do you think I should do? The sun. Even the food Fair. makes no sense. When have you ever seen McDonald's fries stand on their own? Those are Play-Doh fries. How the hell did he put that burger together? And seriously, did I have a twin brother I never knew about? <laughs> did you talk to that guy from the Batman? Because I do kind of look like him. Come on, guys. This is true. Give me a hand. This commercial is so weird, it's kind of amazing. It may not be a good time or a great taste, but it's... There. <laughs> Comedians. It's ah! Hey kids, want your toys to look like Shang Tsung sucking out your soul? Ugh. I don't care, just take these away from us. The kids aren't much better. They look as terrified to be with them as we are watching. <laughs> oh. Even sheets can't hide their life force sucking powers, which means they can also see through curtains. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's just ghostly looking. That's I, I'm sorry, but I, I have to I have to play this. <clears throat> Here we go. Uh. Sorry, I I had to play it. Just because I'm I'm so used to seeing that in the hallway to the left, like whenever whenever power runs out, you just hear the. 
And then you hear that song and you see eyes like that. It's like, <gasps> Have fun mulling that one over. Batteries not included. They run entirely on black magic. <laughs> no! Just take them away! Take them away! Amazing pets! Okay, here's a toy dog commercial that seems more on the level. How wet will you get from a loving likes kiss? Oh dear. Oh. You should wear a bathing suit. Forgive the Lord, they know not what they do. How wet will you get from a loving likes kiss? So wet you need a towel! Goes great after riding my wet banana. Robert's head or belly, he's happy! What a coincidence, men come with the same instructions. Oh. So anyway, you'll need a raincoat. Put a dot com after that. I assure you, that's a sight. Oh, this is certainly wet, but you can't fault an ad for not always catching on to things. Just laugh at them. Two amazing love and licks puppies give real wet kisses. I don't know about we'll laughing. That's pretty cringy. cringy. A jar of peanut butter sold separately. Oh, bro. Oh, um, you wouldn't know anything about ten tons of dynamite at my place, would you? Because I tried opening my door, which is locked from the other side. Oh, that's not good. And then I tried calling 911, but someone's messing with my signal. Then how'd you call me? Well, there was a message written in, I think, Fraggle Blood that said, give you a call. Well, that would mean whoever set up the dynamite is listening to our call. You getting on the Wilkins Coffee bandwagon? You either go with Wilkins or you just don't go. Oh my god, are you still on this? You know, people who don't drink Wilkins Coffee just blow up sometimes. You are a sick man, mister! For God's sake, Screech, just buy some Wilkins Coffee! Don't worry, Tamara. I'm not afraid to put your life in danger for this. I am totally worrying because of all that stuff you just said. Any last request? Like for a cup of Wilkins Coffee? Hey, I know you're crazy, but you're not nuts. So go ahead. Blow up Tamara. You don't have a... Okay, scheduling a recast. <laughs> <laughs> You crazy loony and say that at! You're doing all of this just for Wilkins Coffee? If you don't drink Wilkins Coffee, you're not all there. You're not gonna get away with this. I will not rest until you're an Ottoman! I'm gonna sick the most skilled, psychotic, badass killer the world has ever known on you. Damn it, Gogeta! <laughs> Hello? I need Malcolm? To up it. Okay. Well, that made the ice behind me. Quite literally. That's commercial. You want Chinese, they want pizza, and someone is craving for Oyo. There's something for everyone at DoorDash. DoorDash is the app that brings you food that you're craving right now, right to your door. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app. Choose whatever you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with a new contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, and the Cheesecake Factory. Many of your favorite local restaurants are still open for delivery. Just open the DoorDash app, select your favorite local restaurant, your food will be left safely at your door. DoorDash deliveries are now contactless to give community we operate and say, want a deal? Okay, right now our viewers can get $5 off zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code Nostalgia. That's $5 off and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and app and... Oh, God, I, I messed up. I gotta have to do it again. <gasps> okay, focus. You got this done. You got this. Damn, breathe. <clears throat> That's $5 off and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code Nostalgia. Don't forget, that's the code Nostalgia and $5 off your first order with DoorDash. Oh my god, I did it. I did it. That must be DoorDash is my reward. <laughs> Hello, DoorDash guy! DoorDash, I love you! DoorDash, you know who they are and you know what they do. So go ahead and use them. Food! Food! Like our videos? Subscribe to be notified about them. Want to actually be notified about them? Click on that bell as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall having a good time. Hope to see you there. What's this? Uh, it's not often you see a glove commercial on TV, but after watching this, maybe you can tell why. I was gonna say it starts off innocently enough, but as you quickly discover, nothing about this is innocent. I need some gifts for my girlfriends. Girlfriends? How many? I have eight. <laughs> wow, you're a liar. Yeah, chicks really dig Jay Moore molting into the Encyclopedia Britannica dork. Girlfriend, <laughs> yeah. I find that a little hard to believe. Well, one of them's my mother. Step away from the creeper. Mm -hmm. I recommend these lovely isotonic gloves. They're the latest fashion in riding space horses or a 1940s motorcycle. One size fits all. That's great, I'll take nine. I thought you said you had eight girlfriends. Well, you never know when I might need an extra pair. 
This was the start to a porno. They stripped down to yeah. nothing except his Yeah, it was. It has to be. It has to oh, be. His mother joined. It's it. <laughs> oh, Trinic, no, no, no. Honestly, this would not surprise me if this was the intro to a to a uh, glove fetish porn. <laughs> really, you know. And she's st- never mind. I, I, my brain, my brain is like m- moving at a mil- million miles an hour. Already coming up with a plot line to this, and like let's just not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. This oh. commercial is ewe, and I'm ashamed to have witnessed it. I hope you two find love in whatever Craigslist personal you stumble across. Isotoner gloves. The perfect gift because they're the perfect fit. And then they bang. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, cinema stop. A commercial. This won't be pervertedly obsessing over articles of clothing. When we first started going out, she'd wear really sexy underwear. You were saying? What are you trying to do? You're doing it wrong. Like you see underwear ads. Yes, underwear ads, not soda ads. You have troubles. After a while, she started wearing the kind of underwear that I saw in the hamper when I was a kid. Excuse me? No, there's no way for that to not sound creepy. No! The kind of underwear that I saw in the hamper when I was a kid. Like the kind my hot mother and or sister wore. By the way, drink Coke! But only Diet Coke. Real Coke is for pervs. There's something oddly reassuring about thin, washed-out, cotton underwear with little yellow flowers. Maybe for you, Ted Bundy, but your hopefully girlfriend and not twin is looking at you like... Why is he smelling my panties saying mommy more artificial sweetener? What the hell kind of creepy ad is this? Was the pitch meeting as freaking awkward? Diet Coke ads should have more lingerie gawking and hints to incest. Well, I'm looking to get fired, so I say go for it. <laughs> this ad is ten levels of ugh. I don't know what kind of heartwarming moment they were trying to create, but it's clearly warming something else. And for very wrong reasons. Yeah. yeah. Oddly reassuring about thin, washed out, cotton underwear with little yellow flowers. Brought to you by the petition to get Oedipus Rex in a Star Wars movie. Mm. There's a new baby in the house. Okay, so a commercial for talking animals is nothing new. Honestly, there was one in this collection I was watching before this one popped up. I'm sorry. But then there's toys that are clearly broken and they try to pass them off as functional. AG baby. Oh, you're awake. (laughs) And this baby can talk in baby bear talk. Yeah, that's it. Baby bear talk! <laughs> it's not like the manufacturer slammed this thing against a wall saying work to end you work, resulting in inaudible beeps that sound like Willy Walker's mm-hmm. computer. Kind <laughs> <laughs> of, yeah. It's just bear talk! She has her own diaper, and she starts to talk when you rock her. What freaking bear beeps? I missed that part in The Revenant where Leo fought off a roaring alarm clock. <laughs> 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 Girl, the only way you can see that as talking is if they're drunk and drive for attendance. Oh, you're awake. Your baby needs a diaper tea. Honey, what did she say? I remember. I'm also blitzed. It was a good try. Actually, no, it wasn't, but no. it was a try at a pathetic product. AG Bear and AG Baby each sold separately. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Renko's baby. Oh my god, I've seen this. That's <laughs> terrifying. Maybe a voice was a good idea, but it backfired when not only did this thing look like it ate your little brother and wish you had a bigger family, but they gave it the most haunting laugh. <laughs> That shit. <laughs> what the fuck? I saw this commercial years ago. Someone sent it to me and said, "Tell me this is not like a good a, would not make a good horror film." And I'm like, "Yes, it would." Horror, I'm good. <laughs> Grab a few hits of the vape, and he's good to go. Jesus Christ, that's, that's terrible.
terrifying. I know! Uh, don't you love it? And stop there. Look at how they shoot these kids reacting to it. <laughs> Run! Oh, th yeah, this is a scene from The Shining. Like like, <laughs> or something. Laugh, but you're also the village of the or, or like Amityville Horror. <laughs> Oh, the village of the day, I forgot about that. Time. Or the children of the corn. Yeah. I don't like this thing. I don't like this ad. Quite frankly, I think it blends too well no. with so many other evil laughs. I'm gonna have nightmares about this. <laughs> you said it! You said it! It's, it's the shining. You said it! Holy crap, dude. This commercial scared me so bad it made me grow my hair back. Kind of. Not really. That's just <laughs> It's an illusion. <laughs> it's weird how it's weird how my hair how this up here works now. This sort of works like Velcro. Because watch this. I do this and then I press it down and then It sticks. <laughs> yeah, it sticks. And when I when I pull it off, it's just like it it's like Velcro almost. It's weird. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay to get one of those and then shoot it in the head with a shotgun while it was sitting there laughing. I would not be afraid to come back. It wouldn't. I'd burn it. You haven't watched enough horror movies, clearly. <laughs> Apparently not. I used to be frightened. Finally, something normal. I was scared I wouldn't pick the right one. Luckily, I did. Bet you didn't know if it's in After the a previous party. commercial, this is not that creepy. Yeah, idiot. Now, just imagine him doing Thriller in a recording booth looking like one of the Coca-Cola bears, and nobody <laughs> dares ask him why. Fun Country is a blend of premium white wine and real fruit juice. And in case you're wondering, no. There is absolutely no reason for him to be wearing this. It's for Sun Country wine coolers. You literally can't get any more opposite of that than this. Even the organ music and Halloween theme, it connects to nothing. This is the most random shit you could ever compile. And it's not like Vincent Price just did the voice. No, no, he gladly reveals he's in that costume. Like, this is just <laughs> Wednesday for him. <laughs> My guess is he insisted on being in that thing just because he's Vincent Price. Mr. Price, you're obviously known for classic horror, so we figure we have you against this organ music, lightning... And the polar bear costume. I'm sorry? I think you heard me. <laughs> I don't want to be in a polar bear costume. I have my reason. I don't think our budget can cover our polar bear costume. I'll provide my own. It's good. <laughs> time to get you in. I'll do it for free. In fact, I'll pay you. I just don't think our advertisers will be happy. Listen, I'm going to be in a polar bear outfit saying these lines and nothing else today. It's up to you if you want to shoot it. Yes, we have no choice. Good man. Anything else? <laughs> yes, I insist I speak bear. How do you speak? <laughs> oh, God dang it! <laughs> it raises a lot of questions, but hey, I'd be more concerned if something with Vincent Price didn't do that. You better sleep with your lights on. <laughs> Okay, the world looks mighty good to me. Cause Tootsie Rolls around. Oh, Tootsie Rolls. You grew up with this ad and love so This looks familiar. It. Despite it coming out in the 70s, this jingle was so catchy, they played it decades later. I remember this. When things I think I see becomes a Tootsie Roll to me. Yeah. I remember this. <laughs> Wait. Something no one should have to see. <laughs> I can't even make that many jokes at it. It just puts me in a good mood. With its relaxing song, bright colors, it's a solid commercial. Except for one thing I never noticed. The tagline. Becomes a Tootsie What? Um, it's from Tootsie Roll. Is that for real? Somebody actually got paid to come up with that motto? I can't believe after all these years I never noticed that. I'm assuming they meant to put, mmm, it's from Tootsie Roll, like it was a typo or something, but that's not what made it to the final cut. Maybe there was meant to be a question mark at the end, like, um, it's from Tootsie Roll? We don't know. Terrorists could have made it for all we're sure. 
I mean, <laughs> the ad was a big hit being played decades later. Maybe that same genius was onto something by just half-assing everything. Um, it's from Tootsie Roll. Brilliant! <laughs> Nike here. We need that slogan now. I don't know. Just do it. Brilliant! <laughs> What are we gonna call this bubble thing? Bubble thing. Fucking bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking and bubbles. I, I still love the hell out of this commercial all these years later. Yeah. Whatever it is, I think I see becomes a tootsie roll to me. <laughs> uh, der, I guess. Hello. Uh. Okay, I figured out where the call is coming from. It's coming from inside. Wait, my house? Oh, good. I don't have anything to worry about. Okay, Malcolm, you did good. Just hit me up if there's anything else I need to know about. It. I get it. Talk to you later. Next commercial. Damn. Damn. Uh oh, we're at the point where those creepy ass PSA start up. You know what? I don't even care anymore. You've beaten down any hope of humanity, so just show me the strangest you got. An accident. An accident. Oh, crap. An accident. Good start. You had to, you had to say it, Doug. Yes, bizarrely, the cats from the hit Broadway musical did PSAs back in the eighties. Oh, there's Rum Tum Tugger. Cats would care a shit about your health. Someone is smoking over there. Something we cats would never do. Filling their lungs with thick, dark hair. What a disgusting thing to do. Why can't they be like us at all, licking our dicks, vaginas, and balls? Listen to cats, you men and women. Take care of your lungs. They're only human. Mm, I don't see this leaving an impact. Now, if Judy Dench was staring at you saying all this, you do whatever she says before she climbs into your brain and mind fucks you. The American Lung Association, the Christmas Seal people. It wasn't just smoking they pretended to care about, though. Child safety was also a big concern among cats, as countless video footage has shown. There was a child in the car. A child. A child? A child? Scheduled? No one wants a child <laughs> to become a memory. A child. No. Wow. Long way to go for a song pun. Shut like, up, Grizabella. Probably dead. Let's see if Mr. Destroy the child. Magic him back to life. Oh, well, never was the L. No, no, I can't do that. Too much of him is separated from the rest. That's... That's a puzzle I can't complete. <laughs> I guess compared to other weird people, this isn't that bad. They mean well, they're just hard to take seriously. Especially when dealing with an animal like a cat. I don't know, Chaplin, do you Sounds like a meowton of problems. Yeah, that's about what I guess. <laughs> I'm a bad role model. What would you do if you hey, were Hey, Lou Albano! Hey, hey, Captain Lou Albano! And not just that, he's playing Mario! Stay calm, then find a phone and call the police. Tell them your name and where you are, what happened, and if anyone was hurt. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is kinda cool. Apparently when he did the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, he did a lot of PSAs on various subjects. This guy is so cool, I feel like I can listen to him talk about anything. Do you know someone that owns a gun? Okay, it's a little weird hearing Mario say that. Remember, yeah. guns and knives can kill. I'm telling it to you. You said that like you've killed many people with those weapons. <laughs> Have you been fingerprinted yet? It's fun. I'm eight! Why would I be fingerprinted, giant pointing Mario? I think a lot of it is his pointing. A lot of ways saying isn't bad, it just comes across as so accusatory with that finger of objection. <laughs> Leave them alone. <laughs> Phoenix ah! like yes. yes. these PSAs, what he seems to be ah! most passionate about is advertising his own show. When you go out to play, be sure to let your parents know where you'll be and with whom you'll be playing. Holy cannoli, kids! I'm Mario, and I'm telling you, if you're not watching the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, you're gonna turn into a Goomba. If they need you, <laughs> or if you don't come home on time, they have to know where to look. Don't be the last on your block to be playing with pasta power. I know different amounts of energy I require for both. It's just funny to compare them. We're gonna kick some Koopa. Woo! The Super Mario Brothers. I also love that they forget to edit before he breaks character. Woo! He's like, okay, give me a smoke. 
but by far the one everyone remembers the most, big shock, is the drug PSA. Yes! Do yes. it. Don't be afraid to say no. Remember, don't be afraid to turn to your priest, your rabbi, your minister. I thought they were just used for starting dirty jokes. Because drugs can kill. And if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. You go to hell Did before I you die! Oh shit! That's it's like, it. don't have sex or you'll get pregnant and die. <laughs> it's like, don't do drugs or you'll go to hell before you die. <laughs> dirty jokes. Because drugs can kill. And if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. I mean... In certain cases, it's not entirely inaccurate, I guess. It's just... Like, it, drugs do make some people's lives a living hell. They do. They do. I mean, I've witnessed it personally. But it's just his wording and the way his, he's saying it is just... is <laughs> Sounds goofy as fuck. It does. It's like, yeah. It's like, hey kids, Mario here. And I just want to say, don't do drugs. Because if you do drugs... You'll go to hell before you die. It's like, it's like, come on. It's like, what do you got to add, Luigi? It's like, Mario, you're just scaring me. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway. Ugh. Did I say the gun thing was weird to hear Mario say? That was two minutes ago when I was naive and innocent. What the hell, Nintendo mascot? <laughs> as funny as this is, you'll notice he's not doing the Mario voice for it. And by God. If there's anything funnier than Pee Wee Herman in character telling me about crack, Mario in character telling me I'm going to hell must be its own special high. <laughs> Did you have no idea how many Yoshis I saw to feed my habit? I came from the Mushroom Kingdom, all you have to do is sniff the floor, you're literally flying. I lost so many toes to this addiction. No, they didn't do drugs, I did them. You ever wonder why there's so few civilians in town? Choose rotting away at the end of it all, facing your last in a miserable home. Nothing more than an embarrassment to the selfish, fucked up brat who spawned to replace yourself. Choose your future, choose life. But why would I want to do a thing like that? I choose not to choose life, I choose something else. And the reason? There are no reasons. Who needs reasons when you've got heroin? If you're not Watching the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, you're gonna turn into a Goomba and go to hell before you die. Woo! Captain Lou, I love you, and I love these PSAs. They are mad uncomfortable, but that's why I love them. God bless you, sir. You are the best Mario to ever tell me I'm going to hell. Remember, guns and knives can kill. I'm telling it to you. I am the spirit of dark and lonely water. Okay, I guess this is the big scary one that a lot of people were sending me. It's called Lonely Water, and it's narrated by Donald Pleasant, who plays an evil Grim Reaper character who traps and kills kids in unsafe areas. It's certainly eerie. And this is the kind of place you'd expect to find me. The boy is showing off. The bank is slippery. Not gonna lie, I'm still on that Mario PSA. It's the perfect place <laughs> for an accident. Oh, yes, 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 very disturbing. I can't believe they showed that. The show-offs are easy, but the unwary ones are easier still. And if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. Sorry, sorry, continue. <laughs> this is weak, rotten. It'll never take his way. Yeah, the twerp had it coming. At least he didn't do drugs. He'd be in hell before he died. <laughs> Under the water, there are traps. Old cars, bedsteads, weeds, hidden depths. I know this has all the check marks to creep me out, but I'm still thinking about Mario telling me I'm going to hell. That's surprisingly staying with me more. Even though it was freaking weird, it still felt genuine somehow. Maybe it doesn't always have to be big scares. It's just the little things. Ready to trap the unwary. The show off. The fool. Yeah, sorry. This is well made and disturbing and all, but I think the country that had the most disturbing PSA this year is the Mushroom Kingdom. I just don't think we're gonna top that. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, you'll haunt my nightmares. Don't worry, Captain Lou. I will never do drugs. Oh my god, I dude. Instead do the Mario's I get the fucking point. Let it go. Yeah. You go to hell before you die. Please. Please. And that concludes another commercial Please. special. I hope you enjoyed it and got a text message. Uh oh. Where are your cats? Oh, they're over there smoking it. Chaplin? Buster? Chaplin? Buster? Chaplin? Buster? Oh, oh. Speak to me, boy! Where are my cats? 
Wilkins coffee is on the ball. Either get on the ball with Wilkins or get out of the way. Where am I catching your phone, Zach? <laughs> Salute Wilkins coffee. <sighs> All right, you hairless Elmo. I'll try your damn coffee. seemed a little excessive. I mean, you go to all this effort, you blow up my friends. Rude. After what? Just after well, you blew up Tamara, he what stabbed What is so important about everybody trying Wilkins coffee? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had a feeling. You know, I was home without Wilkins coffee. Let's leave it to the hands of fate. If you don't drink Wilkins coffee, you're not all there. In fact, without Wilkins coffee, you're nowhere. <laughs> it always was a bad sport. Yeah, it always was. Now we're going some were and some don't. <laughs> There's something oddly reassuring about thin, washed out cotton underwear. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out on Halloween. <laughs> That's the. Sh So that was a. Uh... Nogla, what do you think about Wilkins Coffee? Nogla. What did he say? Noise, Noise. Oh, he thinks it's nice. That's good. That's good. Also, you know, the the dead eyes of Nogla are kind of similar to the Wilkins Coffee head. Just like. Yeah. Random people have been commenting on Nogla sitting back there looking like he's plotting something. <laughs> With toilet paper in hand. Yep. It's like, I took your toilet paper away. What you gonna do? That's that is a big nut. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you your toilet paper back, Nogla. There you go. So, yeah, let's put you right back there where you were. There we go. So yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, the whole thing with uh, with friggin' uh, these commercials, I don't. Uh, I remember a lot of them. I remember so many of them, and just like thinking back to to them, like the glory days of commercials and everything. I remembered more of the ones from last time. Uh, yeah. And the escape from the commercials when I did in this one, but I do remember a few of these. Yeah, uh, I remember the Tootsie Roll one. I remember... I don't remember the DK one. I think that one was way before my time. Because uh, keep in mind, although I I officially identify as like a 90s kid because I grew up in the 90s, I was born in 88, so I was born like at the end of the decade. So it's kind of... Same for you, right? Yeah. You were born in 89? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's basically the same deal. Um, so overall, we, you know, we're in a weird space. I mean, our generation's in a whole weird space because we grew up, uh, right after, uh, you know, right, uh, before the internet took off and became the thing it did. We've seen a lot of crazy transitions in our time. We have. Surprisingly. Like, we have. I mean, because keep so in mind. We saw, like, the transition from, uh... Dude, this alone. Yeah, like, the transition well, to like smartphones. Well, the thing we saw, we saw the transition from like line phones in your house, like you know that couldn't go anywhere, to like cordless telephones, to then like cell phones, to then smartphones. Yeah. And then we saw the transition from like cable television uh, on a CCTV um, with like you know shitty rabbit ears to uh, actual cable television on a CCTV. Then to HD TV on like you know a flat screen, then like up to like you know the HD shit that's uh, going on now with like 4K and shit. Yeah. And we saw the transition from like Atari and NES to like video games nowadays, where some of it you can't actually tell if that's a scene from a video game or something they shot live action sometimes. 
like crazy ass stuff. Yeah, it's it's the ridiculous. Internet. We had no internet. Then we <clears> had <throat> dial up internet. Then we had broadband. And now we have fiber. Yeah. Like the internet went from like non-existent to like slow as balls. Like takes you like two years to download a song to like. I remember that. You know, actually like streaming music straight to your phone or streaming video straight to your device. I remember like the first time I ever downloaded something on uh, Napster, I believe. Yeah, I downloaded a song off Napster. That was one thing. But then I remembered I actually uh, went I actually remember when my family upgraded to DSL. <clears throat> like the jump in speed from dial up to DSL. Mm-hmm. You know, Saying that now, that's laughable. Oh, yeah. Uh, we went from uh, fucking watching movies on VHS to watching them on DVD to watching them on Blu-ray. We went from listening to music on tape cassettes to listening to them on, on, CD. bl- on CDs then to listening to them on MP3 players and now streaming them on our phones. Yes. Like, How, so many transitions like, between media and stuff like have happened. Yeah, and it's, it's and astounding how fast. Like, Mm -hmm. within a span of 20 years, dude. Like, in the span of us growing up. Yeah, like, when we were little, like, virtual reality video games was, like, a sci-fi concept. Yeah. And now we have virtual reality video games upstairs, like, right now. Yeah, yeah, we have them, like, we have, like, multiple headsets ready to go. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy how far we've come in such a short amount of time. Uh, It's just, like, someone showed me, like, a picture... From like to, it was like a comparison of like a crowd gathering at the same pl- exact place ten years apart. Two thousand eight, it was one person holding up like a flip phone recording it, and then in twenty eighteen, everyone's got a smartphone and is like recording it like this, and you know just every other which way. It's like mm-hmm. holy crap. And to, apparently there are like literally like government assistant pro- assistance programs that like even if you are really low on income and stuff you can actually get a free smartphone from the government i've heard now, yeah so. i've heard that i it's not like the best one but no, it's still no, a no. smartphone like it's better than a flip phone know what i mean <laughs> absolutely it's like Much a phone better. you can still check your email on and like you know apply for jobs and shit on like for free from the government basically yeah i mean that's that's friggin' amazing mm-hmm. at we got so old so fast it's just like Doug. I think Doug's forty right now. It's so terrifying. It is. It is. It is terrifying. And I and I worry about that. I'm just like, is the world moving too fast? Are we going to get left behind? Probably. I mean, I think the world is moving too fast, and I feel like I'm going to wake up tomorrow and be like an old man on my deathbed and be like, "Fuck, man." You're just going to like scratch. You know, you like wake up and just like, oh, like back hurts. Like, oh, my knee. Uh Scratching your knees, and you're just like, stand up, you look in the mirror, every single hair on your head is gray, and you're just like... Or you have none. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I've already got a head start on that. <laughs> so, again, everyone, thank you all so much for tuning in, and... I try to keep in I, mind that I'm like, at yes. least like most of the people that I have known that were like adults when I was just a little kid are still around right now. Most yeah. of them are starting to look kind of gray, but at least they're still around right now. So at least hopefully if all goes well, I still have like over half of my life remaining like at the moment. I'd say I'd say that. I'd say you've My parents are in their 60s, so it looks like if I get as lucky as them, I'll at least live. Dude, I think in you'll make it 60s. to 60. I think you'll make it to 60 easy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm making it 60 is no big deal. It's just like how far past that are you going to make it, you know what I mean? Yeah. If I make it to 70, I'll be happy. I would preferably like to live to, like, 80 or 90. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd like that, too, but uh, we'll see. I just don't want to get to the point where I'm, like, dementia and all that stuff either, though, so... Yeah. But with medical advances and stuff and all the research they're doing on it, hopefully by the time we hit that age, if we're still going to be around for a little while after, they'll have some ways to keep us sane. Yeah. And not, like, losing <clears throat> our minds at that point. Hopefully. But it's we... scary to think about having to die someday. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it either. Just things like that laughing doll remind me of imminent death. <laughs> well, 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's going to do it. This was the Nostalgia Critic Curse of the Commercials. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more from the Nostalgia Critic, feel free to click the Channel Awesome name in the uh, title of the video. Also, if you want to check out more from us, feel free to subscribe, ring that bell to stay notified, leave a like on the video. It helps us out a whole lot. And I guess until next time, I'll see you then. I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you. Peace.